The game of ricochet croquet was developed by John Ritchies in Adelaide as a stepping stone to association croquet. It is easy to learn and play and has become a popular game in its own right. It particularly encourages strategic thinking and accuracy. Ricochet croquet is played on a standard croquet grass court measuring 35 by 28 yards. Six steel hoops are embedded in the grass and a centre peg is fitted as the final scoring point. Four standard croquet balls are used, blue, red, black and yellow. Play starts one yard in and from anywhere along either of the two ball lines. One starting strategy is for your team's balls to be hit to where they will be close together, but well away from the opposition's. The six hoops are played in sequence from one to six by each ball. A team scores a point for each hoop run by each ball. When a ball completes all six hoops, then a final point is gained by that ball hitting the centre peg. That ball is then removed from the court and is said to have pegged out. The winning team is the one which pegs out both balls or that has the highest score after the agreed playing time, typically one and a half hours. So let's see Ricochet Croquet in action. There are two teams with one or two players per team. position. This is followed by a member of the opposing team. This player sequence continues for the whole game. A team scores a point for a ball running the correct hoop. This also gives the player one continuation stroke. They gain two continuation strokes by hitting another ball, called a roque. A roque ball is then termed as dead for the rest of that turn. The player cannot gain continuation strokes from it until they run the next hoop. Here we join part way through a game as Ruth runs the blue ball through hoop three. This gives her one continuation stroke. She also removes the blue clip. All balls are now live. She now uses that continuation stroke to rocate the red ball, thus giving her two continuation strokes. The red ball is then considered dead. Ruth now uses one stroke to move closer to the black ball, and then uses her last stroke to rocate the black ball and thus gain two continuation strokes again. Ball is now also considered dead. She uses one of her two strokes to position blue in front of hoop four. And she then runs hoop four. This gives her one continuation stroke, plus all balls are again alive. Ruth again rocays the black ball and she again picks up two continuation strokes and the black ball is now dead. As black left the court, she measures black one yard back into the court. Ruth then uses her first continuation stroke to position blue in front of hoop five. With the second continuation stroke, she then runs hoop five and once again, all balls become live to her. To again gain continuation strokes, she attempts to roke a blue onto black, but misses, much to the relief of the opposition team. She then places the blue clip on hoop six to indicate that hoop six is the next hoop for the blue ball to run, 
and she then leaves the court. Ruth has had a very good turn and most turns are not that long. The game of ricochet is not only challenging, but it can sharpen your skills in accuracy in running hoops and rocaying other balls, accuracy in positioning your ball, being able to ricochet balls to gain advantage, thinking strategically, and finally, regardless of how much of a battle the game has been, as Diana shows, pegging out Yay! is always a sweet moment. At the Toronto Croquet Club, we have four full-size courts and normally play ricochet croquet every week on Thursday mornings. Come and give it a try. We have plenty of spare mallets and coaches to get you started. Just ring us first on 0490 one double four seven eight zero. You will be made most welcome.